Welcome to the Ring with the Parlay with your hosts, Kendall Gill and Tilo, where they duke it out over the current events of the sweet science. Moderated by Mindy Bryant, with correspondent Alex Correa of the Squared Circle Report. Sponsored by 6040. Welcome to the Parlay, a long time, 15 year NBA veteran and professional boxer. Kendall Gill, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing great now. You know, I saw a great fight, possibly <laughs> the greatest fight uh, of the year so far. Uh, we will see if it's fight of the year, but you know, it was very entertaining. It was definitely yeah. very entertaining, and uh, we do have a special guest in the studio today, Olivia Curry. Give it up for Olivia one more time, y'all. Olivia. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, middleweight contender Olivia Curley can be fighting next week in Miami. The parlay will be there to cover that fight. So we, we can't wait to have you. And uh, we just witnessed in Brooklyn, New York, one of the uh, right now fighter of the year has to be Ryan Garcia winning by unanimous decision over Devin Haney. And wow, wow, wow. I could not believe what we just saw. Uh, Devin Haney uh, just not, not. I guess not ready for the power of Ryan Garcia, Kendall. And I'll I'll go to you first. What happened in this fight where Ryan was able to just use his power against Devin in such a way that we didn't think was going to happen? Well, first things first is that, you know, I think that Ryan Garcia, it was to his advantage to come in at 143 pounds, okay? He did not have to drain himself down uh, below the 140 pound or get to the 140 pound weight limit. They, uh, I guess they had a had a, a bet where where uh, Devin would be compensated 100, well, 1.5 million dollars for 500 thousand dollars for each pound over, but in the end, I probably would have given the money back and had <laughs> Ryan Garcia be 140 pounds because you definitely saw the size discrepancy. And I told you this in the first round. Ryan Garcia looked so much bigger than Devin Haney in the ring. Also. The one another thing that I noticed is that Devin Haney came into the ring bone dry. Yeah. He was not sweating. He did not have a sweat, and he got caught, caught cold in the first round. I think he never recovered from that left hook. Yeah, he did it. And yeah. Devin Haney, we talked about it during the fight in our in our uh, you know during our fight commentary that Devin it was it was said Devin didn't have power, and you can really tell. Yeah, when you see yeah. Brian punch and Devin punch. It is not the same. Yeah, it's totally different. It is. It's not the same. And now, and Devin Haney fighting at, at one forty. You know, does he move up in weight? Is that a good idea for him? He looked he looked drained in the weigh-in and even in the press the final press conference. I don't know if it's a good idea to go to 147. No, I don't think it's a good idea for him to go to 147 because he really has no power uh, to stop anyone. I mean, I don't know when the last time he knocked someone out, but you go back to also Jorge Linares when he touched him at, I believe it was 135, he has trouble with his chin. I mean, anytime he gets touched there, you know, his legs sort of go away and he and he doesn't have his legs for the rest of the fight so if i was him i would stay at 140 or go back down to 135. you know olivia uh you know when when you fight a boxer right it's always said that the boxer always comes out and uh to the advantage of the guy who's a power puncher who's the who's the pursuer right um that wasn't the case today and that power discrepancy was very very real in this fight what happened to devin haney you think i think so i think you're right, Kendall, when you said that, I don't think he ever recovered from that very first round. Brian came out super hot, super aggressive. I think that was a really smart plan by him because you you hit you rock someone one time, right? Then you can see every subsequent knockdown yeah. is building on the last one, right? But I also think when I'm watching Ryan Garcia, he doesn't look like what you want a boxer to look like. Right, yeah. And I think maybe that awkward style for someone like Devin Haney, who's such a college boxer, maybe that kind of in his head a little bit too. Uh, he was standing in front of him, letting him kind of fire off some shots sometimes, not really maybe using as many angles as he normally does. So I think he kind of fell into a trap. Yeah, you know, I, it, it was a fight. These two are rivals. It was game seven. They made it right. They had played, they had fought in the amateurs six times. It was three to three. And really, Ryan Garcia was strategic. It, 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 it was, it was, you really didn't expect it, but he was strategic because he waited a little bit, baited, got the first knockdown, then he waited again and yeah. baited and got it again. Yeah. Are you impressed with Ryan Garcia? Uh, I, I'm impressed with the way that he was able to execute his game plan. You know, uh, like Olivia said, he's he, he's not really the, the classic boxer. I, I, I think 
that when he was turning his head, trying to do the Philly shell, I thought he was making a mistake. Um, but the one thing that he has, he has the equalizer. He has the left hook. And it's wicked. It's sort of like Deontay Wilder. He only needs to be right one second of the fight, you know, where Devin Haney has to be right the whole fight for the whole 12 rounds. He did not look like he looked against in his, in his previous fight against Regis Progre. He did not look like the same Devin Haney. And I think the reason for that is because, one, he, got, he kept getting caught by the left hook. And he just never was able to recover from it. And I just think the power discrepancy was totally different. I think, I think Ryan, Ryan Garcia was a, a welterweight fighting a junior welterweight tonight. That's what I thought. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Even he had the weight advantage, obviously, yeah. Olivia. And, you know, we look at Devin Haney. He was a, a professional boxer, a great defensive boxer as well. But what does it say about Devin Haney now, you know, besides the weight, that he wasn't able to avoid Ryan's power? I mean, that was, you know, once you felt that power, the first knockdown, yeah. you adjust, but he wasn't able to adjust. What right. does it say about Devin? Yeah, I'm just going to because honestly, before this fight, I, it did not go how I Going. I'm not too embarrassed with that. Like I did not see that many knockdowns. I don't think because Devin King is always showing the high box of So I don't think it's necessarily that he didn't know how to do it. He just explores the athletes. I don't think it's like once you're hurt. Sometimes like you can will it all you want, but your brain's not all there. You're just not going to be able to catch up with your mind. And maybe that was the Yeah. You know, Ryan and I at 140. Right? You look at this fight, and the first thing we think of, well, I think the first thing I think of, I told you during the fight, Javante Davis. Does that happen? Because, I mean, they, they want a rematch, the potential rematch happening, but do you want to see Ryan and Javante Davis again? I, I still think that Javante Davis knocks Ryan Garcia out again. Um, you know, whether it be with a body shot. Javante Tank Davis is a very, very smart fighter, and he baited. Ryan Garcia into throwing the punches, which he, he countered him on with a body shot. I think he'll do the same thing. I would like to see him fight Teofimo Lopez, maybe. Uh, Ivan Pitbull Cruz, maybe. But also, again, I'd like to see this again, yeah, too. Yeah, to me see too. If, to me to too. see if Devin and his dad can go back to the drawing board and make the adjustments. I think it'll be a totally different fight next time. What do you think? You want to see Javante? You want to see that rematch first? I'd like to see the rematch as well, I think, because yeah. I agree. I think the rematching Davis just goes the same way, to be honest. Because to me, Ryan has defensive flaws, like massive defensive flaws. And I'm always surprised that other people are not taking advantage of yeah. that. I think it's just his speed that gets him through. But I do think that Devin Keating can probably adjust for the next time. If he doesn't get caught in that round one, this is all turned out differently. Exactly. You know, uh, the, you know, we, I looked at the 147 uh, division and I saw Banks and Terrence Crawford at, at that level. Uh, Devin's not gonna, he's not gonna do too well at 147 with those two. I mean, it, 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 listen, nobody's gonna do well with Terrence Crawford. <laughs> Terrence Crawford proved that to me last summer yeah. when he when he beat my guy Errol Spence. Also, uh, Boots Ennis. Is there as well? He, Devin Haney cannot compete no. with those guys. I mean, that, the guys at 140 should stay at 140 right now because you got two monsters, all-time greats at 147. But but Devin but Devin did come in and he, he looked drained in the weigh-in and even in the you, final you presser. That, yeah. So I mean, does he go? I mean, is is the weight too? Is he's a heavier person, obviously. Yeah. But even with that, you still think he should stay at 140? He, he doesn't have the power. I mean, he, he doesn't have the power because he'll, he'll he'll get knocked out at 147. I mean, you. You saw he, he fought a welterweight tonight. Yeah. He, and it, 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 the same thing will happen to him if he goes up and fights one of those other guys. I'll ask you, Olivia, do you think if they do the rematch, Ryan doesn't care about the belt and goes up again and wait? Well, so that's what <laughs> is wild to me, too. I cannot personally imagine. I get the weight thing. Like, trust me, I get it. Sometimes yeah. I, I'm sure he thought I'm just going to do what I have to do to yeah. make this fight happen. But for a world title fight, I can't really understand missing weight by that much. Yeah. But yeah. It, it seems like if anyone has to move up, it's Ryan Garcia, right? Yeah, true. You literally can't make 140, then yeah. well, you're just gonna have. I guess he's getting paid, but like, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't love that. Like, it's a sport with, uh, with belts for a reason. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's crazy to see. I mean, this was fight of the year so far, right? I yeah. mean, are we there? No, it is. It, it is. With yeah. the, the high expectations, yeah. the the star, the star power of both fighters. This is a crazy, a crazy uh, build up from yeah. Ryan Garcia. And I'll ask you both individually, and before we get to uh, to you, Olivia. Uh, in your fight in Miami, Ryan Garcia went crazy in the buildup. 
he did. performed in the fight. Are you impressed by that? Or do you uh, feel like it was just still? I think it was still a little bit too much. Okay. Ryan Garcia right. on Instagram every day, <laughs> three times a day, doing God knows what. His his pre-fight post, uh, uh, his pre-fight press conference, rather I should say, was kind of bizarre. You know, you talk about Jesus in one moment, then you talk about something else in another <laughs> that I can't mention on our show. But, can't do it. Yeah, but you know, it, it worked for him. Uh, you know, he, he came in. I, I was actually surprised that he was able showed up to the fight. And actually, I was looking for an Oliver Call, McCall moment when he cried in the ring yeah. and then against Lennox Lewis and stopped the fight. I mean, cause, because he was acting that bizarre. But he fooled all of us, came in, and you got to give him credit. He, t- he took care, care of business. Libby? Yeah, uh, I also was sort of looking for something dramatic to happen. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe he'd back out. A disqualification like, of some sort. Yeah. yeah. But I, I don't know. I also have to that like Ryan Garcia, both of them have been fighting for a long time, right, since they were kids. They're very experienced. I do think just because someone can be disciplined in the gym and like pull off a great win, doesn't necessarily mean that like everything is, is cool right, with yeah. them, right? So, yeah, yeah. you know, hopefully hopefully it was all just an act to get inside Haney's head, maybe. Um, but also being like 25 and having millions of dollars and people... 1.5 million was wrong. nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure that's yeah. you know can be a not not so great thing for some people. So hopefully sure. you know he takes his win seriously. Right. This is an incredible fight, Brooklyn, New York. The Barclays Center had a had a treat over there in New York, and we got a treat here at, uh, at, in Roselle. Give it up to the crowd real quick one time. Everybody who's here, who showed up for the watch party, thank you. <laughs> we appreciate y'all for coming out. Um, and Olivia, we appreciate you for coming out. You got a big fight coming up in Miami next week. Par- the parlay will be there to cover the fight. How are you feeling so far? I feel good. Um, I'm really ready to get back in the ring. It's been like a long time. It's been since August. Um, yeah. I took a little extra time in between fights uh, since the last one. So very ready to get back in there, get back in the win column. Yeah. And- you know, you were Shadesha Green, you know, and in, in Jake Paul's undercard. And, um, you know, you showed a lot of heart. Obviously, you didn't come up with the win, but um, you went all you went all the way. You, I mean, it was incredible to see. Uh, talk about, like, you know, how, how that has affected you in your training camp now and how you see things differently in, uh, going forward. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, I, I had a good time with the fight despite the, the outcome. I think it's a great experience overall to have that much pressure and have to be able to perform the best way that I knew how. Um, so just taking that confidence with me has been one thing. Also, what we've been working on in camp um, is, you know, we've always been like a pressure fighter. My coach wants to make sure I'm throwing a lot of punches, throwing volume. But we've also been working on boxing as well, learning uh, some things, adding to my game that I hadn't really implemented before um, in terms of my boxing IQ, really trying to think a little bit more in there um, and come up with a different game plan. So I'm excited to um, go back in there and maybe be a slightly more mature fighter, hopefully, a mm-hmm. slightly different game plan. And also, I'm going back down to my normal weight class, so yeah. that'll be nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you have one? Did you have well, one? No, I didn't have one. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you're, you're coming in right now. Obviously, you know, the the big, the, the name that keeps going, coming across, uh, your, you know, your your circle and, and all that is Kalusha Shields. We saw her on the on the broadcast zone. Uh, you, would you... Are you are you up to a fight with, with Clarissa? I would really like to have a fight with Clarissa. She uh she finally mentioned me on Twitter, so I know I've made it in the box. Yeah, there that. you go, uh, there you go. But uh, yeah, I think I mean look, obviously she is at the top of the game at middleweight, um, and I've always said that I want to fight the best, and to me that means her. Uh, definitely a tough test. Yeah. But if you're not in it to go for it, right? To really yep. fight the best of the best, and why are you even doing it? So I would love that opportunity and you know it's a puzzle to figure out it's like how do you meet the best there's got to be a way um so it's something that you know we have some ideas but we have to work really really hard to get past the skill set you're not new to fighting out of the state, right? You're not you're to going out. You know, you went over there and, and MVP promotions and their event. Um, does that change the game for you, or does that does that differ from be fighting in in town and, and yeah, things of that nature? I think it's good. Like I, I really think it's um, one reason that we're going to this uh, fight night in Miami is actually to get out of town, right? To get um, to neutral ground. My opponent also is not from Miami; she's from Atlanta, um, so it's like no hometown advantage. I think just being in front of a crowd, like, 
that maybe doesn't like you, sometimes that's good. Like I think uh, getting all that kind of pressure in small doses and in any way you can before you have to go on a huge stage yeah. is only going to benefit me. Yeah. Well, we wish you the best of luck in Miami. I'll see you there with some of the crew members here from the parlay. We can't wait to see Trinidad. Is a, your trainer's in the building somewhere. Where are you at? He might, have, he might have gone home. Oh, he went home already. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, he had to go to sleep. We kept you late a little bit. We're so sorry. We're going to get you to training. Oh, we're so appreciative for you being here. And Kendall, once again, man, what a great fight. Yeah. We, uh, boxing is still giving us treats. People who say people that say that people, uh, boxing is dead, man, they need to relax. Yeah, I mean, listen, the UFC is. Uh, I'm a fan of the UFC, but boxing is going to be around forever. I mean, in, anytime you go and you look at a top boxing pay per view versus UFC, boxing is always on top. I know that UFC. I mean, they have a lot of great fights, but when you get fights like this, it always puts boxing in as number one. Absolutely, man. This is the parlay. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell. Follow us on all the social media platforms. Boxing is going crazy, and the parlay is going to be there for all the matches. This is the parlay with Kendall Gill. Olivia, thank you for being with us. Thank you. We'll see you later. What's up, guys? Tilo here for the parlay. 15-year NBA veteran Kendall Gill yes, there. Sir. Don't forget to subscribe to everything you see there in the description box. We want to hear from you guys, and of course... Hit that bell for the notifications like that you know what's going on. Hit it. By the way, just want to make sure you know, Tyson Fury has never lost a fight to Deontay Wilder. And this is untrue. He lost the first fight. I don't even want to hear it, bro. He lost the first fight. I don't even want to hear it, bro. He lost the first one. He did it, bro. He lost the first one. He did it, bro. You have yet to watch that fight with me. He lost the, he lost the, last, the, the, the last two, but not the first. <laughs>